Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this video, we're going to go over the last question in the Pascal Math Contest for Grade 9s in 2020. It's a hard one, so give it a quick try and I'll be right back with the answer. So in this question, we're coming up with a new mathematical term here called a happy pair. A happy pair is when you have a pair mn of positive integers and their greatest common divisor is a perfect square. For example, if you had 20 and 24, their greatest common divisor is 4. And 4 is a perfect square. So we're going to call that pair a happy pair. All right, to the question now. Suppose that k is a positive integer such that this pair here is a happy one. What is the number of possible values of k if k is less than 2941? All right, so we're going to start with a couple of different skills here. First, let's take this number 205,800, and we're going to find its prime factorization. Now, prime factorization is just when you take any positive integer and you write it as a product of prime numbers. And this can be done in a unique way. So let's split this up into 2058 times 100. And we're going to have to further split it up because our goal is to get all of these products as prime numbers. So this is obviously here divisible by 2. So I can break it up into 2, which is a prime number. So there's our first prime, times 1029, times by, and 100 is just 10 times 10, and or 10 squared. And 10 is just 2 times 5. So I can write that as 2 times 5 squared. Now let's break up that 1029. That 1029, well, that's divisible by 3. So let's multiply it by 3 times by 343, and here we have 2 squared and 5 squared. All right, so continuing, here we have a 2 and a 2 squared, so we can bring those together and write it as 2 cubed. Then we have our 3, and then this 343 we can break up into 7 cubed. And then I'm still left with this um, 5 squared here. So let's put them in order. So we have 2 cubed times 3, which is 3 to the power of 1, times 5 squared, times 7 cubed. And those, you can see, are all prime numbers. Now we can do the same thing with 35k. So 35k, well, we can do it to some extent anyways. So 35 is just 5 times 7, so 5 to the 1, times 7 to the 1, times 7. So that's the best prime factorization we can do, not knowing what k actually is. So let me just write these prime factorizations to the side, and we'll use them later. All right, now what we're going to do is look at what that greatest common divisor is. Let's say the greatest common divisor is d. We'll just set that equal to d. That will be our greatest common divisor. Now, one way to find the greatest common divisor of two integers, in this case, uh, these two integers here, is to look at their prime factorization. And for each common prime divisor that they have, you simply find their product and you have the greatest common divisor. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say we have uh, this number 1500 which is equal to, if we do a prime factorization, 2 squared times 3 times 5 cubed. And let's say we also have this number, 7,000. Its prime factorization is 2 cubed times 5 cubed times 7 to the 1. Now we, we look at what's common in both. So we have 2 squared, that's common. Uh, we don't have any common 3s, but we have a common 5 cubed. So if we multiply those, we get 500, which tells us our greatest common divisor. So that means D, if we look for what's common here, 
can see that there's a 5 and 7 in both. So we're going to have at least one 5 and one 7. Uh, but that's not all, because we still don't know what k is. So let's use another strategy. And this has to do with the fact that d is going to have to be a perfect square. Now, a perfect square, we can look at prime factorizations as well. So let's go back to that previous number, 1500. Its prime factorization was 2 squared times 3 to the 1 times 5 cubed. Now, a perfect square will occur exactly when each prime power in its prime factorization has an even exponent. So you can see the 2 has an even exponent, but the 3 and the 5 do not. So this is not a perfect square. However, if we were to take the number 22,500 and look at its prime factorization, its prime factorization is 2 squared times 3 squared times 5 to the 4. Those are all even exponents, so it is a perfect square. Therefore, for d to be a perfect square, we know that 5 and 7 must both divide d an even number of times. Currently, we do not have even exponents. Now, currently, we know that d is going to be 5 times 7 times k. That's what d is so far. Now, for d to be a perfect squared, this is going to have to tell us that k must be equal, if we do a prime factorization, into 5 times 7 times some other integer, let's call it j. This way, the 5 and the 7 will have even exponents. Now this leaves k as equaling 35j. So if k needs to be less than, or we can write less than or equal since it's an integer, 2940, then that means that 35j must be less than or equal to 2940. Or in other words, j must be less than or equal to 84. So now I can rewrite this 35k as being 5 squared times 7 squared times j. So what do we know about j then? Well, one thing we know is j cannot be divisible by 3. It can't have a factor of 3. And the reason for that is, if j had a factor of 3, then that would mean that both of our terms here would have a factor of 3. And that would make our value for d, our greatest common divisor, as having a factor of 3 to the power of 1. It would not be an even exponent and therefore not a perfect square. So j cannot be divisible by 3. And the same goes with 7. Notice that our first term here has 7 cubed, but our second term has 7 squared, meaning if j had another 7 in it, then 7 cubed would be in our greatest common divisor and would not have a even exponent for one of its prime factors. So it cannot be divisible by 3 or 7. All right, well, what about 2? Can j be divisible by 2? Well, the first term here has 2 to the 3. j could be divisible by 2, but it would have to be divisible by 2 squared, or 4. So it could be divisible, could be divisible by 2 squared, but not 2 to the 1 or 2 cubed, because that would leave us again with the problem that d would not be a perfect square. Now, j can also be divisible by 5, because adding an extra exponent here for our second term won't matter because our first term only is 5 squared. So for our greatest common divisor, it would still only have a 5 squared term in there. So j could be divisible uh, by 5 as well. So that looks at uh, 2, 3, 5, and 7. And it also could be divisible by any other prime. Because if we add any other prime number into j, that prime number is not in our first term and there, therefore will not appear in our greatest common divisor and won't affect it being a perfect squared or not. So that's what we know about j. Now let's look at a couple cases then. Start with case one. 
Now in case 1, let's have j divisible by 2 squared, not by any larger power of 2. So in that case, j would be 2 squared times some other value. Let's make it h. Okay, so that's 4h. Since we know that j is already less than or equal to 84, that means h is going to be, or 4h, is going to be less than or equal to 84, or h must be less than or equal to 21. Now, since um, j cannot be divisible by 3 or 7, this means that the possible values for h could be 1, 5, 11, 13, 17, or 19. Those are all the prime numbers less than or equal to 21. And since there are six of them, that means there is six possible values. But that's not our only possible case. Let's look at case two. In case two, a j is not divisible by 2 at all. Well, that would mean j is an odd number. And since it cannot be divisible by 3 or 7, and we know that j is less than or equal to 84, well, what are all the prime numbers between 1 and 84 other than 2, 3, or 7? So let's go over all those possible cases. We have the, the following. All right, so right there, is a total of 24 possible values. Now, if we look at the 24 possible values in case two and the six possible values in case one, that is a total of 30 possible values. So our answer is D.